Um, so what you've noticed is that Professor Nast makes three interesting points. First point being that God is a sender of guidance and messages. What that implies is that uh, God always has sent guidance to mankind and since that's one of his attributes he always will continue to send guidance and messages to mankind. In the past what that seems to have um, uh, manifested itself as in, in actually in, in many forms but in, in particular the, the form of prophets and messengers or to use the Arabic words, Quranic words, Nabis and Rasuls. Um, the so so what that what that implies is if you think about it then the God must always be the sender of guidance. Um, any attribute that that God has, He would continue to always uh, retain that attribute. So one cannot imagine a time in the future or in the present when God will not send His guidance and messages to mankind. The second point uh, that Professor Nass points out and mentions is that there are two words which I've just mentioned already: are Rasuls and Nabis. Uh, the two words used in, in the Quran to describe these figures who have appeared uh, th throughout the world and throughout history. The first category of these, as Professor points out, is the category of the Nabis. And what usually characterizes these individuals is their ability to bring a, a focused message um, by focusing in on one one teaching or to support and maintain the teachings of of a messenger or a rasul that had come prior to himself the, the, and the second category being the, the more um, the, the greater of the two categories the rasuls bring one a new book they come and address a new nation they form a new nation or they uh, create and 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 uh, inaugurate a new religion we see that uh, Abraham had, had done that Moses Jesus and Prophet Muhammad had done that they therefore would be categorized as Rasuls who appeared with with a book the third point that the professor brings up, which is again another valid, so these two points were, were quite valid from a Baha'i perspective. The third point is also valid in that the Prophet Muhammad uh, became uh, the, the, the last prophet sent to mankind. And the, the, two, the title, uh, Khatem or Khatam, there are two different ways of reading that word, but both of those meanings would apply to the Prophet Muhammad from an Islamic point of view. And surprisingly to some, and maybe even to Professor himself, that is also valid from a Baha'i, either a Babi or a Baha'i perspective as well. Um, the, so the, what that implies from a Baha'i perspective, since a Rasul is a greater type of a Nabi, a, a messenger and, and a prophet are really the same thing. However, the, the categories uh, are different in that a Rasul comes with a new book altogether, a new religion, and starts a new nation altogether, a new civilization. A, a Nabi doesn't do that. So it, when, when the Prophet Muhammad is described as the terminator of Nabis, the, the ender of the line of Nabis, which began with Adam, if you will, and ended with the Prophet Muhammad, what that implies is that uh, God would continue to send his messages he would continue to send his guidance, but that guidance and messages would appear at the end of time when uh, the the line of the prophethood of the of Muhammad and the messengership would terminate uh, and exhaust itself. So the, the the teaching in Islam is that the prophet Muhammad is the last prophet and messenger until the end of time. Now, what the Bab and Baha'u'llah come and then they proclaim is that they've come, they both came with a new book. The, the, the greatest of the books of the Bab was the Bayan, the greatest of the books of Baha'u'llah was the Ahdas. They came very close to one another um, chronologically and the, the, the 
span of 9 to 19 years separated the Bab from Baha'u'llah. The religion of the Bab from the religion of Baha'u'llah. The Babi faith from the Baha'i faith. And what the Bab and Baha'u'llah both uh, fulfill is that vision that the line of prophethood ended with the Prophet Muhammad and, and all these prophets, all these Nabis came to announce the coming of al Naba, which is the great announcement. So the Bab fulfills that promise of the Quran um, that this cycle and notice that the professor used the word cycle numerous times in his talk as well uh, the, the cycle of prophethood and prophecy terminated itself with the appearance of the Prophet Muhammad therefore the Bab began a new cycle of messages being sent by the Morsel God who sends messages and guidance so this guidance is coming now in a new form and this, there's a new cycle of guidance or revelation um, not through prophets which Muhammad sealed but through a new mechanism the other idea of the Baha'i faith is that in which humankind, mankind has matured from the, the state of, of, of childhood into adolescence and adulthood and this maturity of mankind enables mankind to experience revelation in a new way so we also begin from a uh, sociological perspective we see that the Bab Baha'u'llah fulfilled that, that promise by coming with a new uh, framework of, of the human relationship with with God um, hope, hope, hopefully that's helpful uh, we can talk about this more